Hey guys, it's Melissa, and I have to say, if you want to know my opinion, I think the most disgusting and sickening thing about this Ebola outbreak isn't the outbreak itself, it's the fear-mongering that I've seen, the levels of it in the last few days. I think it's really out of control, and I feel bad for people who are completely freaking out over this, because that is pretty much what this whole thing is about. They want people to freak out. Nothing has been proving that more than some of the new things that have been going on. I just got in writing about this because I just saw it a few minutes ago that New York City is now isolating a patient who showed up from West Africa with a high fever and gastrointestinal symptoms. So they've isolated this guy. They're testing him for Ebola. They say he likely doesn't have it, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter. It's all over the news. Guy being tested for Ebola. Freak out. And it's interesting because the statement the hospital released reads like every scripted Hollywood movie you've ever seen. We're going to work closely with federal, state, and city officials. Mount Sinai is following what the Center for Disease Control recommended last week when they sent a health alert to doctors and hospitals. And I thought that was pretty interesting because, first of all, it's really timely. We'll get to that in just a second. It's also really timely because New York City just got done on August 1st hosting the largest ever biological attack drill in the city's history. What are the odds, right? So... What are the odds of that? And what are the odds that all of a sudden the CDC would release a brand new web page never before up on the same day entitled Infection Prevention and Control Recommendation for Hospitalized Patients with Known or Suspected Ebola Hemorrhagic Fever in U.S. Hospitals. This page didn't exist before. And I wrote in the article for the previous video we did, Five Questions About Ebola, did it just completely slip the agency's mind to ever disseminate such information to medical professionals? They were like, oh, this will just never happen here. Come on. But it was interesting because that page mentioned exposure to contaminated air on the page. And when I was writing this story just now, I went ahead and put a link to that since it was mentioned in the hospital statement. But when I went to that page, the phrase contaminated air had been removed. And I went, no, 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 no. I saw contaminated air in there. And this has been a whole source of contention because the whole reason they're telling people not to be concerned about it when they do tell people not to be concerned about it, in the midst of scaring the crap out of everyone, they're like, but at least it's not airborne. So when the CDC released this a few days ago and wrote con air contamination, that was a huge deal to a lot of people. And it spread far and wide really fast that they mentioned that in here. So I guess they decided to change it and now it says aerosols generated during certain medical procedures. Right? And here's the proof. I mean, here's the Wayback Machine to go ahead and show you. It says, or contaminated air. This is what it said just two days ago. It no longer says that anymore. Now it says aerosols generated during certain medical procedures. Now, the reason this is an issue and the reason I'm even showing you that they changed it is because the director of the CDC last week was reassuring everybody that there could never be an outbreak here. This could never happen here. Here it is right here. He was saying it's not a potential of Ebola spreading widely in the U.S. Uh, this is not in the cards. That's director Thomas Friedman. Well, that was just a few days ago. Now, all of a sudden, times are changing because this was written the scariest virus Ebola is back worse than ever in the Pacific Standard and scroll on down here and it talks about how perhaps the most feared potential is Ebola mutating into an airborne transmissible virus and it mentions the fact that the CDC has conceded that all Ebola virus species have displayed the ability to be spread through airborne particles aerosols under research conditions, this type of spread has not been documented among humans in a real-world setting, such as a hospital or household. And as this article points out, that's just not the same thing as saying it can't happen or that airborne transmission is not happening now. And then at a press conference, the same guy who just days ago was saying the potential's not, it's, there's no potential, it's not in the cards. Now all of a sudden, he's not saying that it's not airborne transmissible. This woman asked... Uh, my people are very scared at the rate at which it's being transmitted and moving very fast. I'd like to know how Ebola is contracted. 
This is Rebecca Heyman of uh, Voice of Nigeria. And his response was not that it was not airborne transmissible, but that it has not been proven to be airborne transmissible. It's not on record. He said, quote, there, though there may be circumstances that it might have been spread through the air in situations like incubation of a patient, putting a breathing tube in them, that's never been proven. So is it air transmissible or not? Because this is a source of contention, not just with the CDC apparently, but doctors don't agree whether or not it is or isn't. There's not really a scientific consensus that it's not. And I'm not saying this to scare anybody. I'm saying this because I think there's a huge fear-mongering campaign going on right now, quite obviously. And the reason I say quite obviously is because of this video, which I wrote an article about just a couple of days ago, and I'm going to end with it today. But Bloomberg News put this up. Dr. Ben Newman was talking about how there needs to be a cocktail of drugs. There needs to be vaccines for Ebola. But that takes a lot of money. And then he goes on to say he just doesn't know if there's enough panic or potential customers to necessitate the creation of such drugs. So we just need to get more panic so we can get those really expensive, what, what will end up being certainly very expensive pharmaceuticals and vaccines pushed right on through. Very Hegelian dialectic. It sounds scary, but I don't know that there's enough uh, panic or enough people who are potential customers for these drugs to warrant a company, a private company anyway, putting the money in that it would take to develop these.